Have you ever been out photographing and you didn't have a lens that was wide enough to capture the entire scene in front of you? So you leave disappointed because you're like, what am I ever going to be able to do to capture this scene if I don't have the lens? What if I told you that On One has a feature called panorama stitching and you could essentially use your lens to capture multiple images to cover the entire range and scene in front of you and then merge them together inside a software so that way you get that field of view that you were looking for. If this all sounds confusing, hopefully by the end of this video, it'll be clear. So let's jump into the computer and take a look at how On One uses panoramic stitching. So here we are inside of On One Photo Raw and I have a few images here. Uh, the exact scenario happened to me while I was at a museum and I couldn't back up any further, but I wanted to get more in the frame to kind of show that, you know, this is a museum. Um, it was more for my own personal book, but the issue that I'm running into, so this is a uh, combat scene and, uh, here we'll just double click on it that way it'll open right side up for us. All right. So uh, this is the scene that I wanted to capture, but there was also a sign over here on the left that you can see is just barely cut off. And it is a little frustrating because I was already shooting at 35 millimeter on my 35 millimeter lens. So I was at the capacity. I backed up as far as I could. I was like literally up against a wall and I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to be able to get this entire scene. All right. This could be the same case that maybe you're out at a landscape and you want to get the vastness of the landscape, but you have a hundred to 400 with you. Well, how do you get all of that together? That's what we're going to look at today. So let's just jump back over to our browse view and we're going to select the images that represent the entire scene. All right. So this first image is focusing or at least in frame. It's got the two soldiers here uh, that are fighting with one another. And then I'm going to come over here and mind you, I'm using just the raw files. I did shoot JPEG plus raw. I'm only using the raw files to create this render, but you could do this with JPEG files as well. My recommendation though, and I'm pretty confident on one doesn't allow it. Uh, you have to use the same file types. So if you're going to do this with raw files, you need to use only raw files. And if you're going to do this with JPEG files, you're going to need to do this with only JPEG files. But with that being said, I'm going to come over here and there's more information about the scene happening in this particular image. So I'm going to hold down the command key and select this raw file here and I don't think there's anything more that's happening with this particular scene, but it fits more in the frame of what's going on with the combat. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold down command and select that image as well. And then we'll come down to this row and I'm just looking through here. This is getting more of the bottom portion of the frame. So I can hold down command and click here. And then this is getting the top portion of the frame so I can hold down command and click here as well. This is getting behind the soldier that's uh, on camera right. So I'll select that image as well. And then this is getting the entire sign. So I want to add in that entire sign. So we'll click there. And I thought I would care to have some uh, overhead at the top here. And I'll explain why here in a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that for this particular image. Now, in order to merge all of these images together, right? I have a total of seven selected and I can see that down here at the bottom where it tells me how many I have selected. What I can do is one of two things. If you have the right bumper exposed on, on one foot of raw, then I can come over here to the, uh, not the focus stack. We want the panoramic tool. Uh, I can come over here to the panorama tool. Um, and if you don't have that bumper showing, I can click on window and then I can come down here and select show right bumper. I recommend that you leave that showing at all times. That's just a personal preference. But let's say you're working on a smaller screen and you don't have as much real estate. You can come over here. Oh, you can come over here to the left uh, bumper. 
select more, and then you can come down to merge to panorama. They're both the exact same thing. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And so on one is going to take all seven of these photos and it is going to uh, stitch them together to make one big photo. And the benefit of doing this is prior to generative expand and generative tools, and especially if maybe your computer doesn't really support those generative tools that are found here inside of on one, you can do panoramic stitching. It's going to give you more space in the frame to do the cropping that you would really like to do. So I have this idea that if you ever want something, you want to photograph more of the space and then crop in later. Now, uh, you can see that it did a pretty decent job here, but I feel like I can get a better result if I were to select less images and it captures more of the scene. So I did this intentionally because I wanted to show you that more images is not always better for processing panoramic photos. Uh, instead, less is better. So I'll do a video on capturing these images in the field, but you essentially want to make sure that you are overlapping just enough, but adding in new information. So that way, when the photo merge software comes together, in this case on one, it actually merges well. Um, so let's go ahead and deselect that. We're going to click on this one. I'm going to grab this photo right here. And then I will grab, I think this one was the next one. Or actually, nope, I don't need that one. I want it this one. And then we'll go with this one. So that should give us pretty much everything that we need. And I'm doing this with only four images, all right? So I'm gonna come over to the right side this time, click on the panoramic tool. It's gonna render our panorama for us. And what we'll notice in this one is I'm going to have more of the sign in the image. And you know, that's kind of the reason why I captured this particular photo was to make sure that I had the entire sign in the image. Now I lost some information up at the top. I probably could go back and select some images to get the top of the scene. But ultimately, I think I have everything that I would need in order to create the image that I want to create. Your photo, your photographic vision is going to be different than mine, but hopefully it makes sense. So that way you can start working with it. All right. Now let's go over some of the tools inside of the create panorama workspace. The first tool here is the type it's set to auto, but you can change it to spherical. Um, and then that's not really doing much of anything. So let's go to collage and we'll see what happens here. And this just kind of shrinks things in and it's a perspective tool, right? That works out pretty well. And then you have the next tool down is going to be edges. Now I always leave this set to crop. I like on one to just go ahead and crop it. But if I select none, you can see what happens. Uh, let me just make this a little bit larger so that way we can really see what's going on here. All right, now we got a pretty large workspace. Boom. So down here at the bottom, you can see I have these black edges, and that's just where on one didn't have any information to fill in the frame. So what it does is it looks at it and says, okay, well, if there's no information there and I don't know what to do with it, if I crop it, then you won't have that problem. Now this does give a weird crop ratio. So that's something that you definitely want to pay attention to before you uh, render the file. Maybe I need to go back and add some more images, especially if I wanted this to be more of a portrait uh, orientation type image. But then you also have wrap fill. And wrap fill doesn't do too bad. In fact, I think it does really good for the overall look of the photo. Um, the problem is it does distort the mannequins just a little bit. And there's something going on here. I guess that is his boot. That's weird. If I go with crop, then what I can do is just have my file set the way that I want. 
uh, and then you get the file size. Now, if you are merging multiple images, just imagine how big of a canvas you're actually creating. So I can't remember exactly what the dimensions are. Let's take a look here. 4,000 by 6,000 is what the original image is. And now I'm making a canvas that's 5,300 by 5,300. So that's that perfect square. And that's why this looks the way that it does. But if there was more information, then the height dimension would be larger. So when you create these panoramic images, I think it's really awesome because you're getting more resolution out of the entire scene because it's stacking those original images on top of each other. But you can change it down to 50% and you will get a smaller file size, uh, but that's all based off of what it is that you think is appropriate for your photograph. I'm going to leave it at 100% because I like to have all the resolution and I have plenty of storage, so it's all good. And then you can choose where you open this file. So if you want to just send it back to browse, which is where I was when I created this file, it'll just go back into the folder where I was already at and it shows up in browse. But if I want to go to develop or effects, then I can do that and continue working with the image. Uh, and then you have at the bottom here, add panoramic metadata. So if you check this, it's just going to add information about how the panoramic image was stitched together. So that way, you know that this wasn't taken in a single shot. And that could be extremely helpful. Um, I'm usually not as concerned about the panoramic metadata, not overly concerned about that. But if you are, then you can definitely check that box. I'm going to go ahead and hit develop. That way we can go into editing this image because remember these are just raw images straight out of camera. I haven't done any editing. Uh, you can see that there's lots of noise and all that fun stuff. So we'll go ahead and hit the blue check mark and that's going to tell on one, go ahead and render this file. All right. Now, based off of the speed of your machine, it can go fast or it can take a little bit longer, but either way, just let it run. And when it's done, you'll have a file. And in our case, we'll be in the develop module. So we'll jump to that once it's done. But while we wait for this, now would be a good time to hit that like button and subscribe if you're finding value in today's content. All right. So now we're inside of the develop module and, you know, I'm looking at this boot and his foot is much larger. I don't know if the stitch actually went well uh, here, but I digress. It's just one of those things. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. So just a uh, point of discussion there. Nonetheless, now that we're inside of the develop module, what you can do is hit the Bruins AI and, you know, it, that should have activated for me my no noise AI because this is at 20,000, but it didn't. So that's OK. What we're going to do is come down here to noise selection. We'll hit no noise and let that get rid of some of the noise. And then once it does, I'm just going to apply a preset because this isn't really a video about editing. It's just showing you what you can do in regards of creating a panoramic image that is appropriate. So whatever it does with the noise here, that's going to be good. And then I'll just work with it because it does reduce the noise quite significantly. I'm just looking at it here and I can see that the noise is uh, pretty much gone. And yes, these are mannequins. Um, <laughs> there was a comment about one of my other videos when I was showcasing the no noise AI feature, uh, thinking I was a combat photographer. I am not but I do like to go to museums. So we'll call that good. And then I'm going to make this black and white. So let's go with black and white films uh, because I feel like that would look good. We'll hit the little square icon here. That gives us a good preview of everything that's happening. And I think I'll go with the Kodak Pano Panatomic. Yeah, sure. We'll go with this one. I'm not going to worry about trying to read the name. Um, and I think that that looks pretty good. So here's the before, which actually doesn't look bad in color. I actually like what it looks like in color. Um, so I may actually just get rid of that black and white filter and don't need this tone enhancer either. 
And you know what? I think it was actually in the develop module that was causing the issue. So sometimes you go opening shadows. Now, again, this is kind of off topic to the panoramic uh, creation. However, I think it's value added is opening shadows is not always the best option, right? Uh, because what it does is it takes away some of that dynamic range. And I think that pulling back the shadows actually looks better on this image. So if I hit the backslash key, you can see out of camera, it actually looks really, really good. And I don't need the shadows to be opened up all that much. And then I would probably even pull back on the midtones to get a little bit of a darker image here. Some people may say, well, that's too dark and that's fine. It's subjective. I think that this looks more appropriate. Uh, it's just a little bit brighter than the initial image and I'm okay with that. And that's what I would probably go with for this photo. Now, if I wanted to, the reason that you really come into the panoramic uh, capability is for at least why I use it is so I can crop later. So if I wanted to turn this into, let's say like I wanted this to be a little bit more uh, cinematic, right? I can come up here, I can select 16 by nine and I can just pull this up and I would probably have to pull this in just a bit. So it turns into this focus on the conflict here. And now that boot doesn't even matter anymore. Um, so maybe we'll do something like this and starting to cut his head off. We don't want to do that. So we'll do something like that. And remember, we made a pretty large canvas size here. So when I'm cropping into this, I'm not losing all that resolution. And that's kind of the benefit of working inside of on one foot raw to create these panoramic views. Uh, that may be too strong of a crop, but you, you get the point here. I, I think that I don't need to belabor this, uh, but maybe, you know, we want to pull over a little bit further this way. And so now that really does look like a film and I could like really play this, play this up. I can hit the letter M or grab my masking bug. We'll just fade in the shadow here like so, and then maybe even get rid of some saturation in that area just to make this look a little bit more filmic. And I could throw a LUT on here. Oh, didn't mean to do that. We can go add filter, LUT. I'm just having fun now, by the way. And we can go color grading and look at that. That looks like a filmic type of look. And we could just kind of just cycle through these, see if we find one that really fits the, uh, the idea here. This one looks really good. So insight, boom. And then if it's too strong, just pull down on the opacity, hold the backslash key, open that up. And I think that that looks really good. You let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. So hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did smash the like button, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.